Hi everyone, this is Chuck Norris with LightedPinballMods.com. We're going to be installing a plasma pop bumper into the Star Wars Stern game today. This is one of a three part series of videos that we have out. This is the installation video. We're going with the dark blue into the Star Wars game, but we have all the major colors available as well. Your kit starts out, a complete package ready to install. And today we're going to go with the main pop bumper that you can visibly see behind the terminal board or the TV, small TV that's in there. What we need to do underneath the table is go ahead and disconnect the two lead wires from the panel and the light assembly inside the pop bumper. Tools that we'll need are simply just a pair of dikes, a standard Phillips head screwdriver, and possibly a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers. So what we'll do is we'll find the two lead contacts one from the light assembly that's underneath your current pop bumper cap. So you'll take those out, disconnect them from the board. Now because of the stern spike 2 systems, we cannot run our power from the plasma to this board. You're just simply disconnecting this light assembly from it. We'll be going off of a GI in this particular game. So let's go ahead and close it down so we can take the top off and take the light assembly out. Always be careful. Just putting your game board back down. Okay. So now we're gonna take the cap off. Those two standard Phillips head small screws plate off. Now you can see the light assembly board that is in the stern system. Then you take your needle nose or tweezers and just pull your assembly out. Just like so. I do recommend putting these into a Ziploc bag so in case you do take the plasma out at a later date if you wanted to get rid of your game or whatnot. You can put this back in and just re-solder it back to your board. Next, we're going to take out our body, your original body. Two Phillips head screws. And the reason we're doing this is you're going to replace it with the body that comes with your kit. This body is special cut to accept the plasma pop bumper and to lock it in place with the four set screws that are available. Run our body out. Okay, retain your two screws from your body so you can put our existing body in. Your plunger, your wafer, and everything will stay intact just like your normal. This body is speci specifically cut to accept onto the bottom of the plasma, and in our other video, where we go in depth on that, you'll see where that goes in and how it plays into effect. So you're just gonna put that body back down in there and run your screws back down in it. And you put these down the normal tightness of your original. I like to wiggle the body as I go down with it, that way I know that it's seated correctly and that it's even. So, all good there. Next, we're going to take our plasma that comes in our kit. Now, both the wires are individually wound. We found this to be a little easier to deal with when you're trying to run these wires through there. Um, there is a long length of wire for your plasma to reach underneath your gameplay, depending on where you're hooking the system up to. So what I like to do is just basically lay your plasma. If you take your first wire and just kind of stretch it out between your fingers, it kind of gets 
all the wrinkles out so you know you've got a nice smooth wire to put down in there. So, next function, these will go in exactly like your original wires from your light assembly. They go in the same holes, even with the pins. Um, you just feed them right on through. Once they're into the play field, then you want to run these wires all the way through. We're going to pause just for a second, just so we can get the wires running through for you. The red one as well. We'll go into the secondary hole. Once you get these in, then you can go onto the play field and pull them, or if you have somebody assisting you, they can pull them as well, which makes it a little easier to run these through. Okay, now that we've taken our light assembly out, let's drop our power supply coming off your outlet. I'm gonna plug that in. This is off your service outlet. Now in stern, the service outlet is up here. Belly Williams, Sega, Dead East. Most of your systems are down underneath your play field in the front by the coin door. But this one just happens to be up here. So we're gonna take that, drop that down in the hole so we're ready to hook up to the board. Okay, so now that we've run our wires through our body, and we've got them all run through, through the play field and into the game. We can now secure the top of the plasma to the body. Your switch mechanism, all right, is gonna face to the rear of the, of the game. It gives you the best lighting around your collar and also hides that switch. So we just wanna creep her down on there. And line up your switch with the opening of the body, just like this. And then she'll secure down. At this time, we want to secure it with the four securement screws for the collar that come in your kit. And it's going to be one of the four holes that are in the collar that secure it to the body. Now, I particularly choose this particular screwdriver because it has the removable piece. I like it for easiness and spacing. So then, with the set holes that are in the body for the plasma, they should secure right in. You should have no issues. If for some reason it's a little tight to get in, just give it a little pressure and you'll be just fine to get it in the hole. Our bodies are pre-cut. Okay, now that we've run our wires through, and we've secured our plasma onto the body on the top side of the machine. You've got your two pins for your positive and your negative. We're going to put in our proprietary control board. This is a magnetic control. This will do a click as it goes along if you're hooking it up as your plasma pop bumpers, such as Bally Williams, Data East, Stern. You would end up connecting the alligator clips from the control board to where the light assembly was originally on your plat on your pop bumper. In this stern spike system, we can't do that. It doesn't control enough power to it, so we're gonna have to go up to a GI bulb, which is a general illumination bulb, which we have the stock for as well. So, plugging in, we want to get our power cable that we ran through the back box and you're gonna plug that into the power board we've got power so now what we need to do again with my nifty nifty screwdriver we need to go up to a GI bulb a general illumination because like I said it stated before the power board off this does not run the power properly for the plasma to operate like your original pop bumper so in this one, oops, you simply take out the bulb, you're going to remove your existing bulb, and then we're going to have our Comet connection bulb, which has got the box hookup for our uh, board. So 
So you just put that back into there. Slip that up in here, right back in place. And that has the light. This has the light, which will be just like your GI, and then this will control off our controlling board for the plasma. Let me find my screw. Anyway. Sorry, we're on hunt for a screw. <laughs> okay, so now we're routine this back into place with the screw. Very simple connection. Now this will run the plasma all the time, except for like in certain modes of the game where everything blanks out on you if you're going into a special shot or something like that. It will go on and off in that case. So now that we have our box hooked up and we've got positive power, you want to take off the clip and notice that these are red and black in color. So that is for you to pin in your wires for your plasma. Now this pin does have a top and a bottom. There's a small blade on the top of this pin that will slide in and clicks. Just give it a slight tug just to make sure you're good and you should be just fine. Again, there is a top to these. Slides in. And clicks. Right in place. You're good to go. Now on this, when we plug it back in, you'll see two arrows on the outside of the white hookup. And that goes into the blades or faces out on your circuit board. You're going to hook that in just like that. And you're all good. Now at this time, you can coil up your wires, make them neat, you know, put them up on your play field if you want them up out of the way. We do that with the supplied tie wraps that we have in the game. So now, we want to take our wire from our control board. That has the box clip on it. And you'll run that up to the GI light. And it's a one-way fit. Simply clips in. You're good to go. So now that we've done this, we're going to close up the game and turn it on. So now we've got everything installed. We've got our play field back down. We're going to go ahead and turn on the system. The stern system takes a few seconds or actually a few minutes to turn on. So as we're doing that, you'll notice that it does clear the plastics. Our, pop, our plasma pop bumpers are about 3 8 7 inch taller than normal pop bumpers. Um, in this particular game, the, plat, the pop bumpers do not turn on in track mode. Once we go into game mode, this will come on. So just give it a few minutes for our game to set up, and then we'll go into gameplay. Okay. So we're in the track mode. Okay, so our, power, our plasma pop bumper is running off the GI light that's in this game because we cannot run it from the power from your original pop bumper. And the power does not come from the pop bumper assembly itself. It's coming from your uh, unit, which goes through our control board. Um, notice that in the attract mode, this plasma, there's pop bumpers not on right now, and our plasma is because it's running off the GI. As we go into game mode, this will shut down cycle just like the GI lights will so when you go into hyperspace mode or a, a ball save mode and everything shuts down the plasma will shut down with the game this point in time once you know everything's running well you want to go ahead and with the extra with the additional screws for mounting and go ahead and at least up to three screws we recommend out of the four for securement Right now we've got the one end just because we had to go up and down with the play field. So zip ties in there. Go ahead and get those. Like I said, we do send you a set of zip ties for cleaning up the wires up underneath your play field and getting everything out of the way, make it nice and neat for you. So every time you lift up your play field, it's not an issue. And again, on this, we are running off the GI light, which is a basic, your general illumination lights that are on all the time in gameplay, whatnot. If it were Bally, Stern, or Bally Williams, Sega, Data East, 
you could go from the control board via the alligator clips going to where the your original pop bumper light was hooked up to and it will run and function just as in our other video you saw in Adam's family Metallica they're all running off of those now just to clarify we only use the GI as a trigger when the GI turns on it triggers it tells the relay to turn on and then the power goes through the relay we do use the t uh, power from the service outlet because we don't want any interference from the uh, plasma going back to your game but that's uh, how easy they are to install thank you for watching lightedpinballmods.com